in the early 2000s, Pride Fighting Championships played host to some of the greatest heavyweights of all time, and few were more revered than jiu-jitsu icon Minotaro Noguera. After Pride's purchase by the UFC, Minotaro joined his peers in trying his hand in the octagon, where age and a fast-evolving roster led to a tenure unworthy of his stature. Welcome to the INC, and this is the story of Minotaro Noguera in the UFC. Alongside Fedor Emelianenko and Mirko Krokop, Antonio Minotaro Noguera formed a holy trinity of heavyweight legends. Noguera first came to prominence in 2000, when as a 24-year-old with a 6-1 record, he competed in the 32-man King of Kings tournament in Japan, where Noguera outlasted the likes of Randy Couture and Babalu Sobral to win the contest. The success led Noguera to be signed by Pride, where Noguera became the company's first heavyweight champion after a decision win over Heath Herring. Over the next seven years, Noguera became a staple of Pride's fabled heavyweight division, building a 20-2 record that saw him become the most prolific submission threat in company history. The grappling prowess led Noguera to claim a number of high-profile scalps, with Mirko Krokop, Mark Coleman, and Dan Henderson as some of the biggest names to come unstuck at the hands and feet of the Brazilian. Along with submissions, Noguera was noted for his insane durability, having never been finished in 35 fights despite facing some of the toughest men in the sport, a trait best demonstrated at Pride Shockwave against 350-pound savage Bob Sapp. Oh! No! Noguera formally became a free agent after Pride's closure, with many believing he joined Mirko Krokop and Rampage Jackson in signing for the UFC. Big Nog began appearing at multiple events over the spring of 2007, before officially being announced as a UFC fighter during the main card of UFC 69. Noguera's first match for the promotion came against a familiar foe in Heath Herring. The man Noguera beat to win the Pride heavyweight title before submitting him in a rematch three years later. Noguera got the upper hand of Herring during the early exchanges, but some raised concern at Noguera's decision to stand and trade against the former kickboxer, one that nearly cost him the fight late in the first round. Despite Noguera being severely compromised, Herring allowed the Brazilian to return to his feet rather than attempt to finish the match on the ground, giving Noguera the chance to recover and win a grappling-heavy final two rounds. Herring's decision-making clouding the inauspicious start to Noguera's UFC tenure. Despite the poor performance, the UFC wasted no time throwing Noguera into the title picture. And with heavyweight champion Randy Couture at odds with the UFC over a new contract, the Brazilian was booked in an interim title bout against Tim Sylvia at UFC 81. Noguera once again faced early adversity, as Sylvia rocked the veteran on several occasions while evading every attempt to take the fight to the ground. Noguera finally got the match in his domain early in the third round, and 40 seconds was all the Brazilian needed to claim a dramatic comeback victory. Noguera became the first man in MMA history to win titles in Pride and the UFC, granting Big Dog the kudos many felt had eluded him compared to his peers in Japan. Noguera used the pedestal to land a coaching role on the eighth season of The Ultimate Fighter, before defending his title against rival coach Frank Mir at UFC 92. With both men known for their jiu-jitsu, fans expected the match to be a KG ground-based fight. Instead, Mir showed much improved striking to drop Noguera twice in the first round, before finally getting the job done midway through the second, becoming the first man in MMA history to finish the fabled Brazilian. While questions had been raised over Noguera's chin in recent years, few expected a man known exclusively for his grappling to be the one to do it. And at the time, the first questions were being raised over whether Noguera was finally showing the effects of his Pride-era wars. Big Nog later claimed his preparations for the fight were affected by a staph infection which required a five-day stay in the hospital. Personally, I put it down to dealing with Junie Browning for the past 11 months. 
Nogueira's return to action came at UFC 102 against fellow legend Randy Couture. The fight of the year candidate saw several back and forth exchanges, with the two men even channeling their inner Fry Takayama, before Nogueira claimed the Pride vs UFC battle by unanimous decision. The fight left fans hoping Nogueira could still play a part at heavyweight's top tier. Unbeaten prospect Cain Velasquez put an end to that conversation. Oh, look at that combo! Oh, Nogueira's down! Velasquez oh. looking to finish! It is all over! Wow! After the fight, Nogueira took a 16-month break to undergo knee and hip surgery, stating his intention to return for the UFC's Rio event in 2011 a card that had marked the company's first event in Brazil in 14 years. Nogueira's opponent that night was Ultimate Fighter alum Brendan Schaub, and he was coming fresh off of a win over fellow Pride legend Mirko Krokop just five months earlier. Schaub entered the match as a minus 250 favorite over the veteran, only for Nogueira to show much improved striking to claim a first round knockout. While not the biggest win of Nogueira's career, it arguably proved the most satisfying. It always found a way to win. Big right hand. Yeah. Big trouble. It is all over. What a win for Nogueira! Despite the victory, Nogueira was still haunted by his 2008 loss to Mir. Not only for the manner of the loss, but the belief his pre-fight ailments led to an inaccurate representation of his performance. After several attempts to book the fight. A rematch between Nogueira and Mir was scheduled as the co-main event of UFC 140. Nogueira seemingly had the match won by dropping Mir with strikes in the middle of the first round, only for Mir to survive the onslaught and mount a dramatic comeback. What followed was one of the most infamous submissions in MMA history. Oh, look at this! Unbelievable! Trying to finish it! Having been the first man to stop Nogueira by strikes, Mir became the first to submit the legend three minutes into the first round, fracturing his humerus and requiring 16 screws to be inserted into his right arm. It was another blow for a fighter who was quickly advancing in age and mileage. After the injury, Nogueira's appearances became more sporadic, often fighting once a year and serving as a litmus test for heavyweight prospects. After beating Dave Herman at UFC 153, Nogueira suffered another submission loss to Jiu-Jitsu black belt Fabrizio Verdum, while a main event spot with Roy Nelson at Fight Night Abu Dhabi yielded further disappointment. Roy does a beautiful job of- Oh, he runs it! Again. That's gonna be it! It is indeed! Nogueira's final appearance came at UFC 190 against 7-foot Dutchman Stefan Struve. Nogueira looked every bit his 40 years, as Struve cruised to a unanimous decision. After the fight, UFC President Dana White announced he would no longer offer Nogueira matches with the promotion, effectively ending his UFC tenure with 5 wins and 6 losses. Despite the unsatisfying ending, Nogueira continued to remain involved with the UFC, working as an ambassador for the promotion, particularly in his home nation of Brazil and in July 2016, his career was rewarded when he was inducted to the pioneer wing of the UFC Hall of Fame. Like with most fighters covered in the series, mileage was the biggest failing for Nogueira in the UFC, a trait exacerbated by Nogueira's willingness to take punishment to get a match to his domain. Nogueira was also guilty of failing to adapt his style, and once his granite chin began failing him, younger and more explosive fighters started exploiting his weakness. While his UFC tenure underdelivered, Nogueira's body of work makes him one of the greatest heavyweights in the sport's history, one that fans, finally, are starting to acknowledge. This is the INC. Please like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell so you never miss a video.